Hello and welcome to the CC 2018 version of this video. It seems that uh, Photoshop has decided, or at least the fine folks at Adobe has decided that they need to update some of the tools quite often, some way more often than others. So here's the 2018 version. I'm going to start by clicking on file and telling it to open. I'm going to click on Kitty first because she's the, uh, well, the ladies what we need to cut out along with the cat. And I'm going to go to file and open uh, a background file. These are all about the same size. So whatever it is that you want, go ahead and, and do that. I'm gonna click on snow. It's open, it, it's uh, a smaller file. I'm gonna press uh, control zero and that fits in uh, my screen. I'm going to navigate from this particular image to the kitty, press control zero. The tabs up here work like tabs on a browser. You could have also gone to window and just tell it to uh, either select the kitty or the snow or whichever background you have open. We're using the quick selection tool, which is the fourth from the top, mine's already selected. And notice how if you hover on top of it, you will get some big help from Photoshop. It'll tell you, you know, that you can click to learn how to use that tool. It'll show you, it'll take you to a website and show you videos on it. Um, something that I already have open as well. And if you don't have them open, uh, please get the layers open. Mine are open, but I'll be sure to check out the uh, Getting Familiar with Photoshop video uh, so you can find out how to move around all these tabs and all the uh, labels, etc. I'm going to go to Window and tell it to show me the layers. And I'm also going to expand this area here just so that I can see everything a little bit better. Maybe that's too much. I don't need to click on Learn. And maybe that'll help me for now. I'm on the background and I have my quick selection tool. It used to be that we started off by making a quick selection straight off the quick selection tool. Uh, however, we're going to use select and mask. And that'll show me a different set of uh, tools. These uh, six along the way, we'll be using at least two of them for sure, the quick selection tool. And uh, after that, we'll be using the refine edge brush Currently, it tells me that the size of my brush is at 30 pixels, and you can see the circle. It's about a little bit larger than her eye, and that's fine. I want to stick with 30. If you have a different resolution, or if you want to make more more fine or more coarse selections, you can change this by double-clicking, typing in a new number, maybe 25 pixels. It's a little bit smaller. You could also click on the drill next to it and select the the slider to make it larger, a little bit larger, a little or smaller. You can also use the uh, bracket keys. If you click the right bracket key, it'll make it larger. The left one will make it smaller. I'll stick with the 30. And uh, also, you'll notice that when we went into the uh, into this mode, uh, everything kind of grayed out, and that's because our view mode, the default is to be on an onion skin. Uh, you could also do the marching ants, which will show you that your selection as you're working on it. You can do an overlay, which turns everything red. Uh, and same, you have other varieties of colors that you can use. These really don't mean much until you actually start to make the selection. So with the quick selection tool, I'm just gonna click on her hat on a couple of different places on her face, on the cat's face. Uh, make sure that you click the cat's eyes as well because Photoshop is making lots of decisions and I'm clicking nilly-willy just in separate places. I could also click and drag and then that way your selection will be made a little bit quicker. And it looks like I have most of uh, what I want outlined selected. The purpose of this exercise is to make a selection uh, where we can tell Photoshop to cut the selection out and put it somewhere else. Particularly, we want to, to have the lady be in front of either the lake or the trees or something that you use as a background. You could also use your own files if you so want. Um, now that I've made the selection, I'm going to check something that I maybe I should have checked before. 
uh, edge detection. If you don't see this, or if you only see the words edge detection, be sure to click on the drill to show you what's going on. The radius is currently at zero, and this image, I will take it up to maybe five points so that it uh, becomes a little bit smarter about where the edge is. So I'm clicking and dragging along the edges just to add to the selection. I know that it's adding because the plus is on, on the tool. And with that, I'm going to switch this to a white background. Now you can sort of tell that my selection is getting there. Although it's still a little bit rough around the edges, it looks like it was photoshopped. So what we can do is use the second tool. We've already used the quick selection tool and now we're going to refine the edge. Click on that, refine edge brush tool. Maybe make it a little bit larger. I'm going to click on the right bracket twice. And then maybe make sure that I select smart radius so that it makes more decisions for me. I'm going to leave the rest of uh, these selections alone, but I'm going to concentrate first of all on the cat's fur. I'm going to click and drag along the edge of the cat's fur so that Photoshop pays particular attention to this area. Same thing with the hat, same thing with the coat. Maybe if you feel like you did too much of a selection. Things are beginning to disappear as maybe they are with me. I will click on the minus key and that way the negative of what I just did actually happens. and It's going to return some of the uh, image uh, areas that I've lost. So I think that this is uh, looking okay. And the way to find out once again, well, I'm already on the white background. Opacity is at 50. I'm going to up it. And then that way you can see that the selection that I'm making is actually leaving some of the some of the, the cat's hair alone. By zooming in, also I see that I did not make a selection of the cat's nose. So I'm going to click again on the quick selection tool. Make sure that that is selected beyond. I'm on plus and select the cat's nose. I'm going to press Control zero to get everything back. And now I'm happy so far with this uh, selection. That's the first image, so I'll just click OK. And now I see the um, checkered background. That means that this area of the uh, picture is now transparent. What's actually going on is that Photoshop has laid a mask on top of the image. And you can tell the black area of the mask is actually what's being uh, knocked out. What's on the white area is what you can see of the lady and the cat. Meanwhile, in the other image, the snow is there. And I want to bring the lady and put her in front of the scene so that it looks like she's uh, wintering with uh, her cat somewhere. So I want to make a selection of the, well, I could do this one of several ways. I'll do it the easiest way. And that is to uh, click on, I'm already on layer zero, and that's fine. If you were says background, if says something else, as long as you have these two icons, you're doing okay. If you're missing the mask layer, then you might want to rewind and uh, see what you missed. I'm going to click on the contextual menu and tell it to uh, make a duplicate copy. I will select on duplicate layer or maybe duplicate layer, I'm not sure. That just means that you're gonna make a copy. It's saying layer zero, which is this one, uh, will be copied onto another destination. Currently, the destination is the same file. This will simply just make a copy of it here. However, I will click on the drill next to the kitty name and select snow. If I had any other file open, those would be the file names that I would see and the new layer will be called layer one. We'll be talking extensively about layers in this course. Uh, if you have any questions about this, be sure to send me an email at any point. Well, whenever you're, you're in front of a computer. And so that happened. You don't see anything going on in this image because the copy was put on the other image on snow. I'll click on the tab for that. And now I see my Layer 1 is actually on top of the uh, 
or rather in front of the background. And I say on top of because the background, you'll notice, is the very bottom one, and layer one is on top of it. However, for the human eye, it actually, she's in front of the background. I'm going to press just for safety, control zero, so that I can see everything that's going on to a certain degree. You'll notice that she's kind of floating because uh, she was uh, cut out from a square. That being said, I'm going to click on my top tool. That's the um, move tool. And once again, making sure that I'm on layer one, which I could change the name of the layer if I double click on the words layer one to uh, kitty. Press enter to accept or return if you're in a Mac. The move tool then you can click and drag the area and the whole thing moved. Both of these layers move because one of them contains the actual image, the other one contains the mask. The link in between them tells us that the, uh, the image will respect the uh, area that we selected as long as it is linked. If you want to make additional changes to the, uh, to the selection, you can click on that particular layer, that is the uh, layer mask thumbnail right here. Right click and tell it to uh, do a select and mask again. And uh, you can use the same tools to refine this a little bit more. So I can say, you know, well, let's try to get that hair a little bit better. Same thing with the fur down here. So that it's a little bit softer. Same thing with the hat, only if you want to. Once again, this is the first exercise, so don't uh, overthink it. I'll click OK, and uh, it's a little bit transparent. So maybe I went overboard. I could just go to Edit and Undo Selected Mask, and it'll go back to uh, another time, another place in the same image. And uh, once you've done this, once you have the lady with the cat in the corner, and uh, she looks like she's uh, part of the scene. You are completed. You have completed this uh, exercise. You can go to File, tell it to save as. Make sure that you save as a Photoshop document so that these layers are saved because I definitely want to see them. I'm going to save this in my Dropbox. That's where I had kept the other images that I worked with. I'm going to you can keep the name PS11 Snow, which is actually PS11 Snow, since this is exercise 1.1. Uh, make sure that the type is Photoshop document. Uh, even if you are on a Mac, you should see very similar objectives here. For the file name, I click on Save. Maximize compatibility, that's fine. You can tell it to not show again or not. I mean, that's up to you. I'll click OK. This just tells me that if I were to open this with CS4 as opposed to uh, CC 2018, CS4 being a much older version of Photoshop, I used it back in 2008, maybe? Well, 10 years ago. I'll just click OK and not think about the past. And... Uh, and that's it. Um, now you can go to your eCampus and uh, make sure that uh, you send the file that you just saved, minus PS11 Snow. It tells me that that's an Adobe Photoshop image, and it's about 4 megs. Uh, hopefully the files that you work with in this uh, course will not get too much larger than, oh, I don't know, 10 to 15 megs, because sometimes they get stuck on eCampus. Um, if you have any questions about this tutorial, please uh, email your instructor and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.